Hi everyone, this is Jason Barrack of Wall Street for Main Street. I'm just going to do a very short video today uh, because I wanted to point this out so you can share this with your friends who are book smart but don't understand any real economics. Okay, so on Facebook yesterday, there was a friend of mine who I went to college with, and I think she's getting her PhD in psychology now. She lives up there in New York City. So there's a lot of hipsters and cucks in Brooklyn who uh, maybe know Keynesian economics or they're Marxists or Leninists or hardcore Keynesians or whatever. And so she posted this article here, The Gig Economy Celebrates Working Yourself to Death. And I commented under the article that people wouldn't have to work as hard if prices weren't rising so much over the years due to currency debasement, a.k.a. inflation. People have to work harder and harder now just to survive because the cost of many everyday items has risen so much over the years. And this guy responded to me that uh, he basically gave a token Keynesian Marxist response uh, employing the Marx's labor theory of value that uh, very hardcore anti-rich, very hardcore anti-capitalist, if employers adequately raise the salary, you wouldn't have to work more. Inflation has nothing to do with how much you have to work. Given that productivity has increased in the recent years, you actually have to work less to make as much as 30 years ago, not more. By the way, those... Uh, actually, let me read this whole this whole comment first, and then I'll address it. The rich are ripping all the benefits, though. Are, 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 uh, he misspelled that. The, the rich are reaping all the benefits so and regular people just get abused more and more by the way i clicked on this guy's profile and he speaks fluent russian i believe so he's he's some kind of hipster marxist uh keynesian guy living up there in new york city so he may have worked on wall street or uh for a while now he's anti-capitalist there's actually a lot of hardcore marxists who work on wall street for the job when i worked at investing daily as an investment research newsletter writer in our editorial department for investment analysts and writers there was at least four or five Marxists, including my boss. So hardcore Marxists, they could quote Marx chapter and verse. Okay, well, this guy's talking about how productivity has increased so much. Well, a lot of that GDP, which measures productivity, a lot of it's bullshit. Okay, workers' wages have not risen uh, to offset inflation. They have not risen to match price levels. What this guy doesn't understand is Austrian school economics. He needs to read Mises. He needs to read the basics of Austrian school economics. Start with Henry Hazlitt first, okay? Start, start with Henry Hazlitt or Foundation for Economic Education. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff over there. What this guy doesn't understand is that Wages and prices have a symbiotic relationship, okay? So he's not paying attention to prices. He says inflation has nothing to do with how much you have to work. Oh, yes, it does. The standard of living for the middle class has dropped a lot from the decades. And that's because since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, and this is the government admitting it in their own inflation statistics, the dollar has lost more than 96% of its purchasing power. Okay? The government is not even disputing this. And you know what? They're probably understating it. Okay? So that means the wages have not kept up with the real inflation rate. And so what you have then is you have a huge gap that's been increasing between prices and wages. And you cannot expect workers to keep increasing the wages uh, for no reason. You have to be you have to be more productive as an employee. You basically have to uh, work like uh, on the weekends uh, for a lot of jobs now in order to get a, a, a in order to get wage increases, in order to get a promotion, you basically have to be willing to work 70, 80 hour weeks. You have to be willing to work on the weekends. You have to be on call a lot for a lot of jobs. So uh, this guy really doesn't understand any sound economics. Look, if the dollar's uh, purchasing power was stable or there was deflation and prices had been allowed to fall, then we would be in a lot better shape as an economy. The middle class would have more purchasing power with their savings and their purchasing power they earn from their wages, regardless of whether or not the wages were actually rising in nominal value. And so this guy, you know, I'm not going to argue with him. I'm just going to do this video and, you know, uh, maybe I'll send it to him. But he's he's overconfident. He's a book smart hipster. And he just thinks that there's only one school of economics, but he's been arguing for Marx's labor theory of value, which says that wages have to be increased so workers can buy more and more stuff. That's not what has to happen, okay? 
if wages aren't increasing, prices have to be allowed to fall. That's how markets work. There has to be clearing mechanisms. Instead, what you have had is for many, many decades, you've had Keynesian central planners, both in academia, on Wall Street, uh, in central banks, fighting the price levels. So they've been trying to, uh, with politicians' help and unions' help, to raise workers' wages through, uh, you know, fiat, government fiat mandates through laws, and there's unintended consequences about that. That's why you're seeing uh, more globalization. That's why you're seeing workers from other countries brought in on visas or illegal immigrants. Uh, the other thing I could counter his argument with is globalization. He doesn't understand how capitalism and free markets work is that you can't arbitrarily just start raising the wages because then there will be the incentive to find new ways to lower them. There will be new ways to find efficiencies. That's why you see an effort by corporations to bring in uh, talented employees uh, on legal visas from China and India and so many other places. So this guy doesn't understand. Uh, he's probably a globalist, and he doesn't understand what globalism has really done. So obviously, uh, I, I wish we would have free market and free trade, but we don't have any of those things. We have tariffs on a lot of U.S. goods in other countries, and we have countries manipulating their currencies now uh, for their own gain, and it's hurt a lot of the U.S. workers. Uh, it's kept some purchasing power on some imported goods that U.S. has been able, uh, Americans have been able to buy uh, imported goods for cheaper, but then the workers here in the U.S. don't keep their jobs. So yes, they can buy cheaper goods, but then they don't have the sustained uh, jobs to buy them. So uh, it's it's a bad problem. The, the, the main problem, though, is that with free markets and capitalism, there has to be low taxes and very little rules and regulations. So once an industry is commoditized and the high wages uh, fall and the profit margins fall, there has to be the ability to move on to the next, to make investments into the next industry to, uh, to create higher paying jobs in new industries. And uh, to a large extent, especially in the U.S., this used to be a lot easier, and now it's not as easy, except for an e-commerce business online where there's a lot less regulation for now at least. Although, you know, look at what they're, uh, they're potentially planning with online and the globalists. So, uh, yeah, so this article, the gig economy celebrates working yourself to death. The reason people are, are, are fighting harder and harder just to keep themselves above water to pay rent and food and utilities is not because of the greedy capitalist. It's because of the, the Keynesian central planners. We've, as Ron Paul says, we've had 100 years basically now of Keynesian economics. Keynesian economics started being heavily implemented uh, right after the Great Depression of 1920. Herbert Hoover, another interventionist, kicked everyone who disagreed with them out of academia. And, uh, you know, we've had Keynesian economics and massive intervention devaluing currencies and lying about it uh, with, you know, fake GDP, fake inflation numbers, fake jobs reports for a very long time. Mo and I are trying to raise $1,000 per month for our Patreon account. We have over 2,600 viewers per YouTube video. So if we can get most of our loyal listeners or all of our loyal listeners to donate a dollar per month or, f or up to $5 per month, which would be amazing... That would cover most, if not all, of the money that we need. So uh, we also accept one-time donations. If you go to the Wall Street for MainStreet.com website, uh, we accept donations in cash uh, via PayPal. Fiat, you can donate there. Uh, you can donate uh, Bitcoin through our Bitcoin wallet there on the website, or you can donate gold and silver. We have a gold money account, and we also accept mail donations of physical gold and silver. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we appreciate any and all help. Please forward it to friends. Okay, bye.